Hi everyone. Today we'll discuss about Likubase change log log problem and try to solve it with Likubase in its container. First, I briefly want to talk about what a change log is and what causes a change log log. Change log ensures that if multiple servers start simultaneously, they won't run into problems and they both try to apply the same database change. As long as the process that has set the locked column to 1 isn't killed before it has a chance to set it back to 0, this works fine. When it's not working fine, all other liquid-based processes, including a newly restarted process on the same machine, will just continue to wait for a zero value, which will never come. The only way to recover from this scenario is by running the liquid-based unlock command or update database change log log table manually. Tools like Kubernetes work on the kill process with in doubt principle, and this causes problems. When Kubernetes kills your process before Liquibase set the locked column back to zero, as I said, all the other Liquibase processes, including a newly restarted process on the same machine, will just continue to wait for a zero value. The solution is in its container. We should pull the Liquibase execution from our main application and move it to a separate init container. Init containers can be added to parts and are exactly like a regular containers, except that they always run to completion. Let's move on to coding and find out how it can be released. I have a sample project with enabled Liquibase execution. Inside the resource package, we can find the B changelog package, which includes three different changelog YAML files. One for dev environment, one for test environment, and another one for production environment. Because depending on the environment, the content of the changelog files may vary. And in v-1.0 package, I have a sample change set which creates table with my model employer. If we start our project locally, in the logs we can see that Liquibase has worked, acquired changelog log, then create our employee table and finally release change log log. Our goal is to take Liquibase execution outside of our application. Let's run it on Kubernetes and see what's happened. I have a local Kubernetes cluster on my machine and now, with Helm, I try to deploy my application and see logs. For that, I have a deployment files for MySQL and my application, service files and volumes. Now, let's build our application and create a docker image. For creating a docker image, I use docker build dash f to choose docker file, dash t to set an image name and dot command. After this, I put my newly created image name to my deployment file and execute command helm update sh dev. To deploy it to the app environment. Now, if we go to the terminal and type kubectl get paths, we can notice that we have two ready paths one MySQL, the other our application. If we look at our application logs with command kubectl logs and codename, we can see the same liquid based logs that we saw before. Looking into the database, we will also see that Liquibase created an employee table. Let's clean our database and move to our solution. Now, we need to disable Liquibase execution in our application. For that, I have an environment variable in my application DB YAML file, named Liquibase enabled. For default is true. In my deployment file, I need to set this environment to false, and now, if I try to deploy again, Liquibase will not execute. And in our application logs, we will see an error such as missing table because we clean all tables from database. Next step is to create a docker file for Liquibase. Docker file for Liquibase looks like this. We create an image from Liquibase. Then we copy all our Liquibase changelog files 
which are in our resource package to Lucubase slash changelog folder inside our image. And then execute this command docker entry point sh URL to our database, which exported as DB URL environment, database username as DB username environment, database password as DB password environment, choose a class pass, choose a changelog file with proper environment. For that, I also exported some part of my changelog file name as env environment and update. That's all my Lucubase docker file logic. Now let's create image from this docker file. For this I also use docker build dash f docker file name dash t image name and dot command. Image is created. Now last step. We need to create an init container in our application deployment file. Go to deployment yaml file and define init containers. Name, name of our init container, image, which image will be used for creating this container, lucubase v.1 colon latest. Then we move to the environments. As I said later, in our lucubase docker file we export four environments. Let's define them. DB URL, which need to be in this syntax if you use MySQL database or another suitable option. DB username, DB password and n equals dev to make it clear that DB changelog dev yaml file will be executed. Of course, the values of these environments will not be constants. I could set them automatically, but in order to make it clear to you, I set them hard-coded. Now it's time to execute helm update sh and see the result. kubectl get paths. Let's see to our application logs. There are no liquid execution logs. It's good, but our application still running. Let's look at DB and we can see that all Lucubase tables are created. Let's look at init container logs inside our pod. For this, I use command kubectl logs podname dash c and init container name. And we can see that Lucubase update has been successful. That's all how we can pull the Lucubase execution from our main application, move it to a separate init container and get rid of waiting for change log log problem forever. Thank you for watching.